A short story about a dog and his plane by Quinn Avery. It was one bright morning towards the end of August, while Quinn was out exploring the SL grid, that he came upon by chance what seemed to be an abandoned 1944 Curtis Pitts Special S1 in the Joe Gort Gulf. The little stinker, as it was called, was in less than pristine condition and was tagged with orange paint, meaning the cause of the crash was investigated and the FAA was now done with the plane. Quinn first looked over the weather-beaten basket case of a wreck for possible reclamation and salvage. At first, he just dug the plane out of the ground, thinking maybe he could save some of the less damaged critical airframe and avionic parts. It was easy enough to send them to be recalibrated and certified, and Quinn was hoping to possibly build up another plane at some point. But as he assessed the plane with a trained eye, the damage seemed more cosmetic, just moss and a ton of bird poop, and not quite as bad as it would at first appear from a distance. As an experiment, Quinn pulled a battery out of another plane and hooked it up to this bird. He hotwired the master switch and, to his surprise, all the electronics seemed to come online and actually still seemed to function, which Quinn found very interesting. Sitting there in the cockpit, Quinn started thinking to himself, this may actually be a really nice find. They just don't make them like this anymore and this plane really seems to be about 90% all there. Quinn pondered this idea for a while and finally decided to restore this unique and rare aircraft and save it from the smelter, but that meant he had to try to figure out how to get it home somehow. He could assemble a small team, rent a 27-foot U-Haul, dismantle the plane and drive the truck home, or he could attempt to fly the plane home on his own. His home airfield, Wright Brothers Field, was not far, maybe three sims away, and the runway approach was over water. He could easily ditch it in the drink if needed. So he made the decision to prep the plane to fly it out. Quinn had an old friend with a bunch of scrap parts and borrowed an old nicked up prop of the correct type and arrived back at the plane with a couple of five gallon gas cans. Now Quinn realized this may be a very dangerous flight if a control cable should suddenly snap or fuel line clogged in mid-flight. But Quinn possesses an FSDO ferry permit and is an old salt at this. He believed this one was worth taking the risk. After locating and replacing a damaged force air turbo furbistat bearing, blowing out the air filter and removing the spark plugs and squirting oil into the cylinders and installing new Surefire hot plugs, he hopped in and yelled, CLEAR! as the ignition turned and the engine with 2,500 hours cranked right over and fired up. Sitting there with huge amounts of vibration, Quinn felt the imperative to make this flight a very short and very quick hop. And the gamble paid off. So now, safely back at Quinn's home field, he has this new little pet project. Quinn's first task was to replace the engine that was out of annual 100-hour FAA inspection and beyond the manufacturer's rated useful life expectancy. He gathered drawings and a few new aftermarket parts from a trader plane, with manufacturer's copies of the FAA, STC and PMA certificates, and had a new engine FedExed overnight. Then he sat down and prepared to apply some elbow grease. Quinn was still at it, fully immersed in the task, as the sun set in the west, on what eventually turned out to be an all-nighter. With the new 450 horsepower, 336 kilowatt Pratt & Whitney R985 power plant finally installed, shipping the old one back to get his core fee, Quinn double-checked all his connections, verified all nuts and keepers on the engine mount, a torque to spec, and set them with a center punch and 0.041 stainless steel safety wire. He installed a new wooden prop, and checked all fluid levels, squirted oil into each cylinder and hand-propped the engine manually with the ignition turned off to lubricate the top end. Then Quinn jumped into the cockpit and yelled CLEAR, turning the newly installed ignition switch and the engine coughed and spluttered into life with a huge cloud of bluish smoke, which was sweet, sweet music to Quinn's sensitive ears. After running the engine till warm, he shut it down and checked for leaks 
Not finding any, he pulled all the inspection covers and replaced every control surface cable, arm, rod, tube, horn, crank, pulley, damper, equaliser, adjustable stop, jack, screw, drum, ball check valve and rubber one by one. Next, the aluminium skin was finally cleaned and polished, with bad sections drilled out and replaced as needed. Once this was finished and inspected and the covers were put back on, the plane was given a brand new coat of anti-corrosive red oxide primer. By daybreak, the last layer of top coat paint was applied and Quinn let it dry in the warm morning sun. Quinn started running through pre-pre-flight checks, verifying the upgraded NAVCOM radios and HUD are functioning. Tower, 23 Sierra, east end of field, mic check, over. 23 Sierra, tower copy, read you 5x5, five five, over. 23 Sierra, copy, thank you, over and out. Quinn put away his specialised tools and rechecked all his work. The experimental home-built was now a fully restored Kronos, and Quinn took it up on its maiden flight over to the inspection station at Unity Airport. It purred like a kitten and flew almost as good as new. The End Know you've been down Nothing but rainy days Shuffling around Looking for a change of pace You say you feel lost And we don't know what you've been through do you carry that cross? And no one gives a damn about you. Well, well, to keep on spinning, it ain't gonna turn around. Waiting for the perfect moment that'll never be found. How about now? What the penny do you? That's just a song. And the note to me and you. And you. So you make movies. Play them over and over again. Keep suffering through this. Should I call you at the airport when your ship comes in? You're packed and good to go, but don't know where to begin. How about now? How about now? How about right? awesome dog and a great pilot too. This is the first in a series of videos we are planning 
Quinn and I are going to be visiting different airports around the grid. We love Two Moons Bora Gora runway so much that we wanted to make this our first stop. Two Moons Bora Gora runway is owned and operated by Moon Tears Vought and Ariel Galeas. They also own Moon Motors where they build and sell cars and motorcycles and they also have awesome paints for airplanes. Moon Motors is the sponsors of the Two Moons Bora Gora runway and the adjoining seaport of Bora Gora Bay. The theme of the airstrip is a fictional South Pacific island in the French island chain of Maravellas in the pre-World War II era of 1938. This allows visitors to enjoy the classic era of aviation, definitely a nostalgic time and a fun era to savor and explore. The build is also inspired by the 1980s TV series The Gold Monkey. The series featured the romance of early aviation and exotic locales. The name Two Moons comes from the names of the creators Moon Terrors and Ariel. Ariel is one of the moons of Uranus. The airfield is generally open to anyone who wishes to enjoy flight in a North Sea region. We have hosted several training events for the local Second Life Coast Guard as well as the lighter than air group Regatta. FENS, F-E-N-S, which is a new aviation group for Fruit Islands, Eden, and North Sea, is coordinating flights, so we hope to enjoy what adventure it brings our way. Ariel says that we are happy to open our home to anyone who enjoys flight in Second Life. The sim has been a labor of love and a dream come true for us and is well appreciated by many who have visited us in the 30 plus months we have been here. We offer a quality dirt runway, which we are told is the longest in Second Life, a seaport as well as two professional quality sim-wide racetracks for the car enthusiast. We enjoy it and hope you do as well. Thank you, Ariel and Moon Terrors, for creating such a wonderful place for us to visit and play at, and we hope you keep it open for many years to come. Well, I hope you enjoyed Episode 1 of Quinn the Aviator Dog. We have some more airport visits planned, but if you would like Quinn to visit your airport, drop us a line. And until next time, Quinn says... (coughs) Woo! <coughs>